Going fast is addictive. It just is, and it always has been. As kids, we would push our bikes to the top of the biggest hill just so we could coast down as fast as possible. When we got a bit older, we held our old beat up enticers and safaris wide open to see how fast they could go. When it came time to buy a car, an older Subaru WRX with 300,000 K was more attractive than a low kilometer late model sedan because it was faster, pulled harder, and sounded better. There's no question we are speed freaks and probably suffering from a more than mild addiction, but it's who we are and it's what we love and nothing's gonna change it. This is why a sled like Yamaha's SRX even exists. Now there are some who would argue that logically speaking, there's no reason to have a 180 plus horsepower snowmobile that can hit triple digits before it even gets to full throttle. If simply traversing over deep snow is the goal, then I would agree, there are much more reasonable ways to do it. Those ways are what I like to call boring. Look, you don't have to make any excuses to want or to own a Sidewinder. I get you. I'm a child of go fast upbringing as well. Yamaha's SRX is undeniably fast. Some would claim it's the fastest production snowmobile ever. But here's an important question I intend to answer today. Is it more than that? Is the SRX more than just a fast snowmobile? The SRX is built on the same platform as all other Viper and Sidewinder models. It uses the same 137 inch coupled skid frame and ARCS double arm front suspension. This means that in terms of ride quality and handling, it's every bit as good as any other three cylinder Yamaha, which is to say that it's really good. Since Yamaha introduced their new strike ski this past season, the handling of their sleds went from not great to excellent, and ride quality has always been good. Improving the ride and handling of the SRX even further is its lowered suspension, which is achieved by softer rate springs in the back and dual rate springs up front, which are softer initially, but ramp up quickly. Lowered ride height, yes. Decreased travel, no. Which is smart, and is why the SRX still rides so good. Of course, a Fox Zero IQS shock package helps in a big way. I found with IQS on its softest setting, the SRX rode great in the small to medium sized bumps. It did bottom once in a while on bigger stuff, but not in a harsh way at all. And if conditions ever deteriorate, it only takes a second to bump the compression up to medium or firm right from the left hand switch cluster. The system works better than advertised. Does the SRX handle well? Yes, it does, really well. And this is thanks in part to its lowered ride height. It corners extremely flat, but does a great job of weighting the outside ski for excellent bite. Despite the sled being heavier than most, especially up front, steering isn't overly heavy. With that said, I'm surprised to see that Yamaha isn't offering a version of the SRX with power steering. But what about trying to trail ride a sled with a 180 plus horsepower turbocharged engine under the hood? This is one of many things Yamaha has got really right with the SRX. Yes, there's more than 180 horsepower on tap, but the combination of excellent engine and clutch tuning result in a power plant that's easy to control and ride smooth on the trail. The power is not jumpy or jerky at all. It's simply a pleasant to ride power package. Ergonomically, I find the SRX to be very comfortable with one caveat. Around the Snowtrax office, we all agree that Viper and Sidewinder seats all have foam that's just slightly too soft. You sink too far down in. With firmer foam, it would go a long way. The handlebar position is very comfortable as well, but my knees tend to rub on the body panels pretty much all the time. It doesn't hurt or anything like that, it's just something you notice. A slightly revised panel shape could easily solve this. Is the SRX more than a snowmobile that just goes really, really fast? Yes, it definitely is. After spending considerable time on this one in all different types of conditions, I can confidently say that this is also a really great trail sled. It rides smooth, corners well, has controllable power, and is comfortable. All markers of a great trail sled. The difference here is that when you do hit the lakes, you can blow past the 100 mile per hour mark with a simple squeeze of the trigger. 